Play community. I am Kristen Kalina from Mastermind Adventures. I'm here with Katya Green. Uh, she is the director of, and I have to read it, the Uncommon Theater Group. Uh, it is a nonprofit theater group in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Let me specify, yes. I am director specifically for the disaster, the musical production. I am not director of the entire group. Oh, that's a good distinction to make. Yes. <laughs> I'm one of their many directors. She is a director for... Yes. This particular show. Yep. Called exactly. Disaster. Called Disaster the Musical. Disaster the Musical. And it's yes. for kids. Yes, it's it is. is. Well, it's the, they're, they're the actors. Yes. The right. age group is 14 to 19 right now. Right. Awesome. So um, I thought Katya, Katya and I have been friends for a while. And we're actually spirit sisters for even longer. Very um, much Because so. our, uh, our moms were best friends um, growing up. And her mom was in my mom's wedding. Um, so we've always had a connection even when we very first met each other, but we've actually known each other for probably about three years. I think so. Yeah. 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 About that. And Katya is just awesome. She, uh, she comes to everything I ask her to come to <laughs> for our live action events. She has been a ghost. She has been a teacher. She has been... Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, a um, goddess of various kinds. An 18th century socialite. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, a couple of times now for yes, that one. Yep. Um, and she's an incredible actor. And I thought that an, an incredible actor, an incredible singer, an incredible person. And I thought that the community would really benefit from hearing from her talking about if you, you know, kind of what to look for in your kids to encourage them to get them into the theater arts if that seems to be their thing. So I just want to make sure it was recording. And sure, so absolutely. why don't you tell them a little bit more about you and kind of your background and how you got started in um, becoming all of the beautiful things you are now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Such an introduction. Thanks, Kristen. Um, so yes, I, I started off acting at an incredibly young age. I was very interested in performing beginning at age three. Um, I blame that on my great aunt, Gloria, who was uh, an auditioner for the Rockettes, and she was really? very proud of that, and danced for many years, and yeah. tried to make it big in Hollywood, and so I was always fascinated by performing. Um, I started performing, I think, officially when I was five, uh, was the first show that I was cast in. Um, so that has been over 25 years worth of shows that I've been doing. Um, after that, I very quickly found a love of makeup. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I thought transforming yourself into these characters, um, whether it just be an old lady or something even more outlandish, right. was really interesting to me. Yep. Um, and so I started playing with the Klutz Facebook. Oh my gosh, or, uh, I remember face those. painting book. Yes, yes, yes yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, I got that and I just couldn't stop myself. I had oh to gosh. face paint all the time. <laughs> Um, and then uh, as I got older, I realized that I could sing, and so I started singing, and um, I was telling Kristen earlier that my grandmother would watch me and my brothers, and she had an organ, and so she would um, force me to sing while she played, which I thank so much now for that, for those afternoons, because that was just wonderful. Um, and you know, I've, I've just continued from there, where um, my great grandmother had a sewing machine, and so she taught me how to sew. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'm also a costumer and a costume designer, and um, you know I just keep on developing more and more skills. Where it's like, okay, well I'm gonna try my hand at props, and I've right. tried my hand at fabrication for different um, prop pieces, and uh, you know I, I try to dabble in a little everything. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and and now I'm very involved in directing, which I really love. Um, I'm still a resident costumer at MMAS, which is Mansfield Music and Art Society okay. in Mansfield, Massachusetts. Um, but I also love volunteering down here with Mastermind <laughs> Adventures. I mean, I can't get enough of it, really. <laughs> so, and we so appreciate it because you do such a great job, oh, and thanks. we have so much fun together. Yeah. It helps us make some memories too. It's really just a great way to blow off steam. Yeah. It's like I'm, you know, I can't even function as myself anymore. <laughs> right. I need to be a witch. Yeah. <laughs> for just a little just, while. Just for a couple of hours, I'm going to completely not be Katya right. and shake off all my cares yeah. and all my worries yeah. and I'm going to just be a witch. And yeah. so that is, I think that that is something that I 
cherish most about my acting experience yeah. is that I am able to cast off the stress yeah. and just be something completely different yeah. for a little while. Mm -hmm. And now I know I've made you do interact like interactive kind of improvisational theater. Mm -hmm. Do you have other experience in improv? improv? Yeah, so actually in college I did a lot of improv classes. Starting in high school I was really interested in improv. Mm -hmm. um, I don't... Because you're very good at it. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I was about to say I am nowhere even close to being an expert. Oh, I think um, you're pretty good at it. But You um, always get everybody giggling. Oh my gosh, I try. <laughs> as, as long as I can be silly yeah. um, and I know a little bit about where I'm going, I yeah. can kind of figure it out. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I started to improv in high school and I kept going through college and I have actually done a couple of shows where um, one in particular was a show at Bridgewater State, which my best friend Will directed, mm -hmm. um, and it was all improv. And so you start off with developing characters, and as long as you know your characters, and you have an idea of what the sketches might be about, mm -hmm. you just continue from there and you develop the dialogue. And mm. so that was a really interesting uh, show. Yeah. And especially um, seeing it and then recording all the dialogue afterwards yeah, because yeah. every show was different but we would record it so we had six entirely different scripts wow out of that experience that's neat it's really cool that is really cool not that any of them were really particularly good you're not going <laughs> to see this on broadway it's like a one night only event right. but it was still really interesting yeah well i you know i cuz i did some theater um, I was actually telling Katya, because we actually never talked about like how we both got started into theater, but I started because I was so shy and so like painfully, Which I still I can't believe. nobody believes me. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I was so like painfully, painfully shy. My brother Patrick was the gregarious, outgoing, you know, I always say that like my son Seth kind of channels uh, Uncle Patrick very mm -hmm. much. Like he, he comes, he's, he fills a room and he was always very naturally outgoing and I was terrified of everything and everyone and um, yeah I, I would burst into tears if people you know if adults would actually look at me was terrifying just just having someone look at me was, was right. awful um, and so my mom was like she was a single mom at the time um, that I was kind of in uh, elementary school and she was great about getting me into anything that she could anyway. I yeah. think some of it was um, a relief for her to not have to worry about where I was because she knew I was in one program or another. But she got me into theater because she was like, you need to get over being so terrified of everything. So that's really and awesome. how to get yeah, she's awesome. My yeah. mom's awesome. Your mom is pretty awesome. I, I think so. I'm kind I love of my mom. With her. <laughs> yeah. She's kind of every the best. new Facebook post is like, what's Kathy yeah. doing now? <laughs> she is, yeah, she, yeah, and she's come and done a lot of roles for us since she's yes. been back here yeah. in the area. She comes and dresses up and so she's awesome. a hoot. So anyway, but yeah, so that's how I got into it and then it became a passion for me. But I always felt like improv was both the most terrifying and rewarding like part of, of acting because you really have to be people that are really good at it have to be really sharp on their you know they kind of have to be on their toes yeah you really and be able do. to you know kind of spit things out well but. I think the the most important thing about improv is that you are you're an active listener right you yes, have to be active listening yeah. and it really helps children develop that skill yep. of you know I am actually paying attention to you mm -hmm. I'm picking up facial cues right. um, and body language as well as vocals mm -hmm. um, um, and so, oh, that's so important it for is. development. Yeah, yeah. It really, really and, is. And making that connect, like helping, it helps kids to make connections. And I think that that's the other thing is that the people yeah. who are really good at improv can make connections between things that are maybe not like right at the front of your mind, you know? Yes. And, and that's what makes it really interesting. Kind yeah. Of when, when someone's really good at that, you're like, wow, that's an incredible skill yeah. to have. Yeah. Oh, totally. But I love the active listening. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. So, um, so this is, is this your first directorial role? It's actually been eight years since I was last directing. Wow. Um, the last time I was directing, I was still in college. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and let's be clear, I was in college for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it wasn't that long ago yeah. but yeah I, I was directing in college I did uh, several projects and I really enjoyed especially taking scripts that my um, my fellow students had written um, and just 
playing with them, yeah. you know, and, and just even reading aloud, not yeah. even having to stage something, but at least reading aloud and getting people to um, create characters around mm -hmm. those and really open it up. I was fascinated by mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So it's incredibly exciting to be making my uh, directorial debut after yeah. Yeah. a very long break. Yeah. And um, I'm actually incredibly excited that this particular company, Uncommon Theater, that's Uncommon Theater, T R E dot org, mm -hmm. um, is having me back for Legally Blonde next oh, spring. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes. So yeah. I'm very excited to do that one. And is that going to be adults and kids or just? So that one is going to be actually uh, all of the groups that they work with are children, um, but it's ages. That one is going to be ages 12 to 19, I believe. What a fun show. Yes. For them to do. Yeah, it now, really is. Is Disaster both a, um, Disaster the, the, the musical? The musical. Yep. So it is a musical. Yes. That's what, that's what I was going to, see how I pay attention? Uh-huh. Yeah, see about that making connections thing? Active, yeah, I need to active practice. listening. <laughs> active listening. <laughs> I've got to practice that a little more. <laughs> um, so it is, so it's a, it's a song and dance and the whole. Yes, so yeah. it's actually, uh, it's a musical that was written by Seth Rudesky. Um, who is famous for his, um, oh gosh, Sirius XM radio show, oh. uh, which I'm going to forget the name of it, but it is a Broadway-based radio show. Oh, fun. Yeah, and um, he has, it is so tongue-in-cheek oh, about wow. everything 70s. Oh. It is an, an homage to 70s disaster movies. Oh. So it's like Airplane um, <laughs> times 20. <laughs> With 70s music, like we open the show with hot stuff. Oh, oh my, you are having a it's ball. It's a great time. Yeah. And my favorite thing is making all these pop culture references yes. that none of the kids get. <laughs> so then I'm going on Facebook and I'm like, okay, Katya's pop culture corner. Here we go. <laughs> YouTubing it for you. My first one was Wild and Crazy Guys. They didn't oh know what Wild gosh. and Crazy Guys was, which I was like, come on, guys. Oh, my gosh. You're killing me. That's so funny. I but know. that was way before their time. Oh, way before yeah. their time. But yeah. time to educate the young ones yes. on the good stuff. Yeah. Oh, good for sure. quality pop culture. Yeah. <laughs> Some good <laughs> SNL. Oh, yeah. Yep, totally. Yeah. Although SNL, I lately have been really enjoying quite oh, a lot. I haven't watched any of the new ones. I've got to get back into it. You know, it. I don't ever watch it when it's on. I watch it on YouTube also. Right. <laughs> okay. But it's a good so two-minute break. It's when... too late. <laughs> too late. Yeah. If SNL could come on at like six, yes, I'd be perfect. I'd be all over it. <laughs> totally. That is so funny. So is Legally Blonde also a musical? or it is, is it? It is. Yep, yeah. and it's based on the movie. Um, Loved that movie. Reese Witherspoon, I know. And this, the music is so awesome. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing about that show, um, that was coming to uh, Broadway, I think, when I was my senior year or freshman Double year of high school. Sounds so right. like 2003, 2004. Yeah. Um, and so I've known the music for quite some time, yeah. but I've never had the opportunity to direct. So oh my gosh. You know, I'm really going to have that. fun with and that one. And that's such a fun, quirky oh, yeah. script. You get the bend and snap. Yeah. <laughs> You can work that into the choreogra choreography for uh, disaster. You get a little bend and snap action. Uh, so this is not your first time though working with kids. You've done no. a lot of other yes. things working with kids. So talk a little bit about some of your other programs that you've worked with. Yeah, so um, I actually, when I was still in high school, I was working with younger kids. Um, I tried to volunteer at the middle school um, and would come back and, and visit any time that I could to help out with different theater programs um, with Somerset Middle as well as Somerset High School. Uh, and then when I was in college, I was working with YMTC, Youth Musical Theater Corporation over in Fall River. And um, I did some assistant directing there and some choreography and uh, worked on costumes. And that was a really great time. Um, and then from there, Oh gosh, well, I have my experience with Arts for Youth, mm -hmm. um, which is a summer camp that is out of Bridgewater State University. It's currently being held at Bridgewater Raynham High School, and um, I have been volunteering with them now for many years, mm -hmm. as well as working in their office. And, right. um, so I've, I've seen many Many a kiddo. Many kiddos. I, I actually have on my resume that I have bandaged many boo-boos in my time. <laughs> I'm an expert boo-boo bandager. 
I love that. Yeah. That's so funny. That's so true, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably boo boos of all kinds, boo boos oh. of the heart and the oh, soul. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. No, all I of had, those. especially when I was working as the office manager at the yeah. camp, you know, yeah. I was bringing the kids down and sitting them down and just, okay, we're going to have a few minutes. We're going to color this this drawing and let's just calm down a little bit yeah, like yeah. we can we can work through this yeah so because so. I imagine working with kids in the capacity of theater you're gonna get a lot of very dramatic kids yes <laughs> yes gosh they are naturally is, you know mm -hmm. drawn to acting in theater yeah might be a little yeah dramatic so um <laughs> I think the the thing with children who automatically love theater is that their empathy levels are incredibly high mm. um, and they are incredibly um, sympathetic and kind and caring kids yeah. but because of that they can also um, their emotions can run a little hot yeah. you know where they can be incredibly joyous or something happens and they can flip on a dime mm. and I'll tell you growing up um, I was very much that person mm -hmm. and I, I remember being a kid, my father just reminded me of this the other day, was that um, I used to say, oh that, that person, they're my mortal enemy. Can you uh, imagine uh, <laughs> an eight year old saying they're my mortal enemy? That is You're hysterical. eight years old. My dad was always like, you need to just calm it down. <laughs> to take it back a little and he would he would always say he would actually quote a movie um what was it calm down francis oh, have I you oh okay no. it's a it's um a bill murray harold oh, ramus movie i think oh. stripes actually oh stripes like calm down yeah. francis yeah so i just hate being called francis <laughs> <laughs> anyhow a little tangential it's fine but yes um theater kids their emotions run hot yeah and um, they totally need an outlet to channel that into and um, getting getting a script in their hands and being able to read lines and channel that energy into you know developing a character that is awesome mm -hmm. that is such an outlet right. you know right. um, and it, even if it's you know it doesn't have to be Shakespeare mm -hmm. it can just be picking up the newspaper and reading different quotes and voices yeah you know something as simple as that yeah but being able to get your kids to focus that energy yeah. into something creative is yeah. very very important yeah so that kind of goes into my next question which was like if you if you have a kid like if parents are out there and they're they're looking for something to get, try to pique their kids interest and they want them to try theater like what are the things that that are like, ooh, this kid, this kid right here, this kid needs a, a theater program. Or <laughs> like, like, what are the things that are kind of like those key elements of a kid that would really thrive and kind of really needs that as a parent looking at so, them? So, you know what's really interesting? Arts for Youth, um, we've seen children go through that program. In that particular program, they offer um, visual art classes, they offer musical classes, they offer theater classes, um, some of them even ha have taken computer classes, you know, so it's a lot of different forms of arts. Um, and there are a lot of different classes that you can try. Um, and there are kids who have started at age six and gone through that program all the way up to Arts for Teens which is at the same camp, but it's for the teenagers. And when they get to that camp, they might decide that they don't want to act anymore. They mm. have no interest in being on stage. Um, and so those kids actually work on sets, right. work on props, work on right. costumes. You know, there are so many different, different areas in theater. You don't have to be an outgoing mm. extrovert to be on stage. Maybe you don't want to be on stage, maybe you're an introvert, but you like building things, right. or you like fabrication, or you like sewing, you know? The, theater makeup. is yeah. makeup. Theater is such a, a, an open and welcoming environment. It isn't just for one type of kid, right? you know? Right. And you can, there are lots of different places where you can just find something that you can totally, even if it's putting on wigs, mm -hmm. 
you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I loved putting on wigs yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. And so I started um, playing and designing with wigs. So that's hair, you right. know. Um, it's just, you can find something for every type of kid yeah. in theater. Even the technical kids, as I was, Even as we were the talking, I was thinking, because that, that, that's always a need in yes. the theater, someone that can run the board yes. and understand lighting and um, audio yeah. and oh, you totally. know, good sound. Or and even, that. you know, um, with Uncommon Theater, something that I just learned about these kids was that we have... Yes, they're coming to me at night and they're having rehearsals, but during the day, they are making their own costumes, they are making their own props or uh, pulling their own props. We even have kids working on social media mm -hmm. and publicizing okay. the show. Oh, and so, uh, yes, obviously we're trying to get kids off the computer. Right, That's yeah. what the whole point but of this conversation kinds, is. there's different kinds, yeah, there's but different kinds of applications on you the can, computer, right? Yeah. You can have kids working in social media. Yeah. They're experts at that. Mm -hmm. But if they are working towards a goal of, okay, I'm trying to um, get word out about this show, um, and they, they can be incredibly helpful. I have kids who are organizing flash mobs to oh. perform at Foxborough. Oh, I wow. know. I'm so excited. And they, you know, they, um, they even took the score and like figured out how to make the mix and how wow. each song should go into the next one. You know, they're working so hard on this wow. and it's all, yeah, it's social media, but... But those are applicable skills. But they're yeah. applicable skills, yeah. you yeah. know, um, advertising for yeah. yourself. Yeah. It's so important. Wow. It's so great. That's, you know, I never really thought about that, but you're right, even like the marketing end yeah. and the graphic design yeah. um, end and things like that. Yeah. Totally. Wow. So, um, so having worked with kids for a while, a uh, long time, um, <laughs> have you seen, we talked about this a little bit offline, but have you seen kind of how kids have changed? Like, do you think that they're, di that they're different now than they were maybe when you first started or their needs are maybe a little bit different? Yeah. I mean... <sighs> I definitely have noticed that children are, you know, very much there's the introvert or there's the extrovert. There isn't a whole lot of in between there. Um, either they're comfortable being around the theater or they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that there have been a couple of situations that I've seen over the years where I have pushed a little bit further and the child has realized, oh, I do in fact love theater um, and I just had to find where I belonged mm -hmm. um, and then there are others who just have no interest mm -hmm. and so I think with each individual child you need to feel that out whether it's going to be right for them I will say that there are, the world of arts it's so wide there are so many different things that they can do um, even if it's writing or um, you know painting sets or whatever whatever it might be even if it's ushering ushering for your local theater company so that way they're experiencing the arts they mm -hmm. might not be directly involved in the production right. but they are ushering and they're still interacting with um, strangers right. and understanding you know what goes into the production and seeing it from the front of house um, I think that that's so important right. so yeah they might say I don't want to be involved maybe try to steer them in a different direction mm -hmm. you know yeah I know for, for me with my kids, it was really important um, because of my own background that they got exposed to different kinds of productions pretty early on. Yeah. Um, I remember, and you know, uh, my son Luke has autism, um, but when he was four, um, I got tickets to The Lion King at, in Providence. It, it, was, it was just, it had just started touring. Yeah. And, um, and I wasn't sure how he was going to do, you know, so I had Seth who is about two and a half years older, so he was closer to six, six and a half. I knew he'd be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but with Luke, you know, he wasn't, he was just starting to talk. Um, it was, it was really like, I'm not sure yeah. what this is going to be like. So I got the closest tickets that we could afford, and we actually got pretty close because it's different than New York City. I would have never been able to afford it in New York. Mm -hmm. But um, but in Providence, we actually, I think we might have been, I don't think we were in the pit, but we were, you know, we were pretty close to the front. And it was his first show ever, and the lights went down. And I remember him looking around, and then all of a sudden the music started, and he was just like, and I was like, okay, here we go. Either he's going to run out of the <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna run out of here <laughs> screaming, or 
it's going to go well. And it was really only those two options for a four-year-old with autism. You just really don't have a lot of, of you know, of in between there. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, he loved it. And he talked about that show. He still talks about that show yeah. to this day. And then that was like, okay, so this is a thing that he can really enjoy. And he loves theater. He loves going to theater now. Even when we do our little interactive theater things he loves playing a character mm -hmm. in them um he's you know he's too big to he doesn't want to like participate anymore you know because he's too grown up for that now oh, of course yeah. um you know even though there's ki old, kids older than him like totally into it but like even oh, when no. they're like 30 something yeah. year olds but who are that, like totally into it yeah <laughs> it's that very uh -huh. black and white thinking and he's he's very much in that 16 years uh stage of you know this is this is you know, this is for little kids and it's not right. for me anymore, especially since I'm running it. It's, I think it's a little bit different. Sure. But, sure. but yeah, I was, uh, you know, so, you know, after that, I just tried to get them to every single performance we could afford. I've taken them to the ballet. I've taken, and, and it, theater doesn't have to be expensive. Like if you want to expose your kids to theater, you can find inexpensive, uh, you know, community colleges, um, even some high schools and stuff put on some really great productions. Um, that is a great way to expose your kids to theater absolutely. Um, and absolutely. see if they even have an interest in it at all and then you know kind of take those next steps that's right even um, you know check out your local libraries oh yeah um, you know I have friends who actually they tour their children's theater shows they have I think about 24 different shows mm -hmm. that they have written mm -hmm. and they have these costume pieces they drive around the country in their RV and they go to libraries and they perform everywhere right so um, you know yeah. there are always different programs like that you just have to Google them you mm -hmm. know um, what I, I actually do is I type in arts and my zip code mm. and I'll see what's going on in my zip code right um, and sometimes you get a hit and other times you don't but mm -hmm. At least that will start you down the the internet wormhole of right. finding what is right for you. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about kind of how to encourage your kids, right? To mm -hmm. you know, to see if they have that interest. Um, what about if a, a kid seems to have an interest in makeup? Because that's something that you love. Oh, absolutely. To do. Yeah. So. Um, so if they seem to have an interest in makeup, I will say that uh, buy them as many books with faces as possible. Mm. So I actually, as a makeup designer, I have what is grotesquely called a makeup morgue. Oh, really? It's actually called that. So that's what makeup designers have. We have photos of faces and we just collect faces and it might be I just had a total Game of Thrones flashback. I, I know I know trust me when I saw that segment of Game of Thrones I yeah. was like oh oh I'm a creepy person oh no this is what I do except you're I just, keep them in a book right but you know you're you're collecting um, images of faces and interesting things in the world um, that might inspire them to paint on a face and so then wow. get them some face paint I really recommend and be very careful about different brands make sure that they are um, truly safe for mm -hmm. children because there are lots of face paints out there available in the market that are not actually safe for skin mm -hmm. uh, especially if your child has sensitive skin mm -hmm. and so make sure you get something like um, uh, Wolf Brothers actually. Wolf Brothers offers a really great palette. Um, it's probably about like that and it's I want to say 30 bucks which might be a little bit steep but you can get so many face paints out of that mm. like it's great. Um, and just let them paint on themselves. Mm. You know I know there are a lot of parents that I'm like oh I don't want it to get all over the place but here's the thing if you buy the right face paint it washes off with water and soap no problem okay you know and you just got to make sure that then the kids faces are properly moisturized so that way their skin does not dry out but let them paint on themselves and let them try a couple of different things where it might be okay now draw a flower and okay now draw um, draw another eye or draw a, a nose and so suddenly you're creating this whole new character and they don't know what it's going to be let them invent it themselves 
Um, and even when uh, they're finished, I also like to take pictures of every single you know, face paint that I do. Because then you can see, okay, well that one, I would have liked to have changed this. And you can see the development of the training over the years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you have any like specific resources that you really like for that kind of like any particular books or youtubers or oh websites? Oh my goodness, there are so many youtubers. I mean if you just go on YouTube and uh, search for face painting you will find so many really talented people. A lot of kids are out there yeah. creating videos which are just like above like I couldn't have even imagined making a video of myself when I was like 13 of like, okay, I'm just going to make this whole face of makeup and here you go, guys. This is how you do it. No, not, not 13 year old Katya. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of great videos out there. As long as they have the tools for it, they can, they can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Kids are so darn smart. Yeah. Holy cow, yeah, every yeah. time I'm like, how did you figure that out? Um, you know, and so that's very helpful. And also for reasonably priced, um, if I don't mind plugging this website, uh, sillyfarm.com has a really great selection of safe face paints. Okay. I can't express this enough because I've heard so many times the horror stories of buying the wrong face paint and now my kid has a rash that's gonna go you know, stay on their face for like three weeks. Right, yeah. So yeah. go to Silly Farm. Are there basic tools like uh, brushes or anything like that 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 they should kind of look for? They actually have a really great starter pack of brushes. I mm -hmm. think it's like five and I think the brushes might be ten dollars. Okay. It's like two dollars a brush which really isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't want to do that, if you go to a local craft store, mm -hmm. Um, any of those brushes, yeah, paint any brushes. any paint brushes, the acrylic brushes that they have, you can grab a, a couple of those and that's perfect too. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are lots of times when I will just use um, acrylic paint brushes rather than spend the money on expensive brushes, right, right. you know, especially if I know I'm going to just do this one gig and it's going to really wear out my brushes and then I can just throw them away. Right. You know, you don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about it. Is there it. a certain um, solvents or things like that to help them stay clean? Because you know kids, you know. So, um, John, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kids, Johnson's. maybe like taking the dirty, nasty oh, thing, know. and you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. It's fine, mom. It's, it's fine. fine. It's clean enough. I don't know why I have this rash. <laughs> so Johnson's baby shampoo. Okay. Yep. Just a little bit of that yeah. with um, a little bit of warm water. Slish it around in a in a cup, and then rinse them out, and they are fine. Air brush, uh, air dry them though, because you want to make sure that they are dry. They will develop mold if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, oh gosh, Abilene. Abilene mm -hmm. uh, makeup remover. Okay. It comes in a white tub with a blue top at CVS or Walgreens or wherever. Um, and I can't tell you enough how wonderful this makeup remover is. Mm -hmm. It's like a petroleum jelly, mm -hmm. but you just massage it into your face and all makeup comes right mm -hmm. off. Nice. Um, even the really intense makeup that I use for um, prosthetics yeah. takes it off right yeah. right away. Doesn't irritate the skin. Yeah. 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 Talk about that a little bit. Your prosthetic, because I know that you've done some pretty cool, <laughs> some pretty cool prosthetics yeah. for some shows that you've done. So um, actually, last year uh, I designed makeup for Shrek the Musical, which was at Family Performing Arts Center in Bridgewater through uh, Bridgewater State University. And um, that actually was a really interesting process. So I decided that I was going to build all of the prosthetics from scratch <laughs> for Shrek. <laughs> Toss your green, everyone. <laughs> so, um, so it was really cool. I actually went to, um, I had done this in college, but it had been a while. So I went to Reynolds Building Materials um, in, I think it's Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, they have a workshop there and they offer classes, one day classes for um, anyone who wants to come and learn how to build a prosthetic. Wow. So it is everything from, um, you know, creating the, um, the uh, negative of the face. So you're um, applying, um, oh gosh, I'm going to forget the chemical compounds, but you're basically um, 
creating a cast of the face so you get exact measurements. You're then creating a ceramic or a uh, porcelain mold of that face. And then you are um, sculpting clay over top of that. And then you're going to make another mold of that. <laughs> and then you're gonna <laughs> use the prosthetic um, so, uh, chemicals. I actually used um, silicone to make my prosthetics, although a lot of people prefer um, foam latex. And so uh, I created these noses that were custom to wow. the ants, uh, to the actor. Um, so that was quite the process. Wow. It was, would it was you do a it lot. Again? I would absolutely do it yeah. again. But um, one thing that was incredibly tricky and theater, I'll tell you, you come up with some really creative solutions. Yeah. You figure it out. Thinking outside the box. Thinking outside that <laughs> box. Woo! Um, my actor was incredibly sweaty. Oh, and this sure. was a performance that went up in July. Yeah, yeah. And so um, every single week there was a different iteration of the makeup because he would either sweat it off. And this time he was sweating off the prosthetic itself. And this, the next time he would be uh, sweating off the, the makeup and the paint and so every time it was a different experience and every time the actor came off stage it was smacking his face with paper towels <laughs> painting on a new layer and shoving him out on stage oh my gosh oh it was oh justin oh was gosh. um a real trooper yeah i i was very lucky i had a great actor playing shrek yeah. and the rest of my team was really wonderful and i had an amazing um person who i worked with kylie who uh, was my assistant for the makeup, and um, she works with me at Barrett's Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, so, I forgot about that. Yes, yes. so this is actually my uh, going to be my 10th season at oh Barrett's Haunted gosh. Mansion. I know, it's unbelievable. Um, and Barrett's is up on 18, Route 18 in Abington, Massachusetts, yeah. and it is one of the best haunted houses you can find in the northeast region i will never be there but oh. I, I root you on from afar <laughs> i do not do haunted houses I'll, I'll tell you the truth i would never have been caught dead there but they so um 10 years ago har har. i know <laughs> <laughs> see what i did there um i would never be caught anywhere near there but i happened to see a flyer at Bridgewater State and they were looking for makeup artists oh, and wow. actors oh. and so I went and I applied and I've been there ever since oh, and I've learned it's interesting because I've learned the art of the scare mm -hmm. I hate scary things mm -hmm. I really really hate scary things yeah. you can't make me watch a scary yeah. movie because I will kick and scream yeah. and hurt you <laughs> but um, I have learned how to dissect every room that I walk into and it's like oh yep there's the distraction there's the scare yeah. We got this, oh, no problem. So it's so it's, looking at it from a different angle. It's, it's different. Yeah. Looking at it from a different angle is completely different. But it's really, you know, that is, that's a whole different acting experience. Yes. Yeah. You know, where people are going there to get scared. So I'm going to be the creepiest Katya I can yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a completely different character, and I have had a lot of colleagues go to the Haunted Mansion and they would not be able to pick me out of a lineup mm -hmm. because you know oh, no. I saw the I've seen the makeup you're transforming yourself yep. so much you would just never know right um, you know and that's including vocal work mm -hmm. that's physicality that's makeup that's mm -hmm. costume there's a lot that goes into that um, and being able to maintain a character mm -hmm. and again that improv is yes. so helpful right um, so yeah, wow. you can you can go a long way in the theater. Yeah, and all different angles of the theater. So yeah. I recommend that you get your kids involved. I yeah. can't tell you enough. Some it is way, really shape, good. Form. It is really. It is. Um, it is. You can you can guarantee that a kid will be stretched if they if they get into some aspect of theater. Yes. It will. It will. They will always grow. Yeah. Um, there's always a way for for kids to grow and to learn. Um, you know, and of course we approach theater from a completely different standpoint. I just learned, I, I interviewed my friend Marty Ann, and she's, she was saying how much she really enjoys, I'm going to get it, am I going to get it wrong, um, creative theater, shoot, I'm, I'm going to get creative dramatics, creative dramatics is what she called yes. it. Yes, okay. And I'm like, hmm, this sounds very much like what we do, and I never really realized how very similar that aspect of theater is to what we do, because we just look at it as live action games exactly. or live action role play yep. um, 
but it's it's pretty much the same thing and um and, and it does kind of give kids that outlet to create a character and you know that improvisational piece of it and of course we build in all kinds of you know problems for them to solve as well but um but yeah it is it's a really great outlet for kids and yeah. especially kids uh you know definitely outgoing kids but even introverted kids who need who need that kind of layer between them and the world yeah. to find themselves yeah um and uh i know we had a kid in our heroes uh our heroes journey program last summer who i had known for several years and had never heard him speak like ever like painfully painfully shy wow. um and uh, you know, we got him out there in the woods and we started, you know, uh, doing whatever it was, whatever part of the program it was that they were going to find something or do something. And he took charge and he's talking to everybody. And I was like, what just happened? Oh, oh and yes, that's my exactly. Lanta. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was one of those moments for you where I was like, what just happened with this? He just came alive, you know, and don't I don't you love that. It is. Yeah. It's really such a rewarding thing is to I've... see these kids when, um, you know, you know, I remember him being terrified of me asking, you know, can I get you something to drink? And he couldn't even like look at me. And here he is in the middle of the woods, just taking charge and saying, you know, this is this is the way to the bandit camp, and here we go, and yep. and that kind of thing. And it is, it's it's such a, a rewarding feeling as somebody who's an instructor and, and looking to try to bring out the best in kids. I've I've seen that happen so many times, yeah. and it's so exciting yeah. to see them suddenly find somewhere where they can. Okay, feel safe. I feel safe enough, yeah. so I'm. I'm gonna do this thing that I've never tried yes. before yeah um, and sometimes it really is just give them a different character mm -hmm. sometimes you're just not comfortable in your own skin mm -hmm. and you've got to figure that out and if I you know I, I gotta be honest with you I'm not a great interviewer I have incredibly high anxiety when it comes to interviewing mm -hmm. but if I can come up with a character yeah I'm completely set. You would never imagine that I have anxiety, but right. it really is. Yeah. Um, and that's just like kids, you know, yeah. they've got to come up with their own character. They've got to think outside the box and, yeah. um, and just try something different. Right. Just try something different. Cause so yeah, because it really does. It works for those kids who are looking for an outlet for that extra energy oh, yeah. and it works for the kids who, who need to hide behind something yes. to find who they really are inside. Yeah. So, so cool. Um, so I think we are done with our time. I think we're just wow. about wrapping up. See, That's it goes awesome. fast. It goes so fast. Yeah. I'm so appreciative that you came to chat with me. My I, pleasure. Because I know you have a busy schedule. She's in like a million things and going in different directions. I can't say directions. no. That's my biggest problem. <laughs> There's always something. I know. I've, that's, that's a challenge that I need to work on. Personal development. Yeah. But, yeah. um, you know, and I don't know if it's out of line to offer this, but um, if you, if anybody in your community mm -hmm. um, has a challenge with finding a program, mm -hmm. I would be happy to answer any questions. Awesome. You know, so. Um, yeah, no, that's not out of line at all. Okay, great. Yeah. So if yeah. you can uh, get a hold of me through Kristen, yeah. I'd be happy to help you find a Definitely. program that is right for your child in your area. Oh, that's so sweet. I so appreciate that. Of course, my And you pleasure. can find Katya, um, you can come see her show if you're in the local area at the Uncommon Theater Group in Foxborough. And yes. when is that going to be? When so is that that's going to be, be at the Orpheum Theater. Uh, we open July 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Okay. And, uh, the Orpheum Theater in? The Orpheum Theater in Foxborough. In Foxborough. It's okay. right in the center, uh, right on the common in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Uh, and you can find more information about the program at Uncommon Theater. That's Uncommon Theater, T H E A. T R E. Yep. Did I spell that right? Yes. Dot org. Yes. Yes, you did. Yeah. And I'll put the link in the comments and Perfect. in the show notes and everything else. Great. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you liked this video, please share. Uh, get other people into the group so that they can watch live with us as well. And um, if there's someone you want us to talk with, you know, reach out to me. Let me know. I'll try to seek them out so that we can get those kids some alternative activities to. Uh, to YouTube because that's the number one thing they want to do apparently is YouTube. But unbelievable. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Get outside, kids. <laughs> Get outside. Go, Go read a script. Yeah. <laughs> Put on a puppet show. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, we had talked about that. Yeah, for sure. So thanks so much, guys, and we will see you next week. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.